Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Catherine Kent on the subject of reincarnation, belief systems and emotion. This session was recorded on the 16th of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part one. Welcome today, everyone. We're doing another feedback session with myself and Mary. And this time we're giving some feedback to a lady again in the USA who is called Catherine Kent. And she's asking questions about reincarnation, God, God's love, and many other questions about whether it's loving to even have us here on Earth. <laughs> and uh, we're going to answer those questions quite specifically so that because we find that we receive a lot of these kind of questions from people um, all around the world without there being much awareness of what the underlying emotions are that drive these kind of questions. And on top of that, we find that many people send in what I would classify as argumentative emails that we feel we need, and we feel we need to address that kind of a problem as well in this particular response. So Catherine, hopefully uh, you're a new person who's come across this recently. So hopefully you enjoy this, but I can guarantee that perhaps there'll be parts of it you certainly won't enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> we usually try and focus, don't we, in our feedback sessions on people who are inquisitive rather than argumentative. Or Some people write to us almost feeling quite offended about what we're saying and, mm. and wanting to make a point through their question. Rather yes, than in fact, being... a lot of the emails that are sent into us are not really questions. Mm. They're really statements of other pe of personal beliefs of people without those people really understanding the underlying emotional reasons why they have the beliefs that they have. Yep. And then on top of that, because, those, uh, questions, because the emails are argumentative, we normally ignore them. We don't normally spend any time with argumentative people. Mm. We spend time with inquisitive people, people yeah. who want to know the truth and who want to discuss it and, and, and who want to be open to specific, to, to love-based reasoning. And, and, and Catherine, you're not one of those people yet. <laughs> and we hope that this will help in some ways, help yeah. you uh, become one of those people. Yeah. Mm. So um, I'll read Catherine's letters to you. Sure. And um, <laughs> she's very, uh, well, expressive or passionate in the way that she... <laughs> Which is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. So I'll try to do that justice sure. in my reading. Sure. She says, hello, AJ. Thank you for your devotion to truth and love, which are by their nature divine, and for the dedication to record hundreds upon hundreds of hours of video to make your teachings available to the public free of charge. It's our pleasure. <laughs> First, a seemingly long but comparatively brief background. <laughs> Can I point out, firstly, that most people want to do this, give us a long but or oh, brief background yeah. of their life, but um, oftentimes it's driven again by some unhealed addictions mm -hmm. that need to be addressed. Um, if you want to give people a background of your life without those people asking for it first, then it is always an indication of an addiction. However, we will read it and yeah. and and generally. We will look at, you know, you can see usually from <clears throat> the statements that are made that there are quite a number of, you know, unhealed emotions driving the, the, desire, the desire to share that kind of information. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Throughout the course of 30 years of increasingly careful, always prayerful seeking, asking and discernment, <laughs> I have been lovingly led down a path to gradual awakening. Mm. This process began consciously. in 1987, with noticeable boosts in 1998 and 2009. A pattern of 11 years would stipulate 2020 <laughs> as coming up next. <laughs> but it began long before that. The first obvious sign I recall was a powerful identification with the lyrics to the song from the musical Hair. This, I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Harmony and understanding, sympathy and trust abounding. Mm, that's not the song Hair, though. It's, it's, it's actually a song, song called The Age of Aquarius. From the musical Hair. <laughs> from the musical Hair. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. <laughs> Sad guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew absolutely positively that this message was why I had come to the planet. I don't agree, but go on. <laughs> the year was 1968 mm -hmm. and I was a child of five, having been born in 1963. Mm -hmm. Following many years of great pain, my seeking, asking and discernment were born in early adulthood. I've come to see my mission as helping humanity awaken to the truth that love, God's will be done, and intentional oneness with each other are vital. I call this raising the consciousness of the planet. <laughs> this is a sacred mission which I believe that I and millions of others have come to fulfill. Mm. That 2012 gate was harrowing. Can I uh, firstly address that issue now before we get into the other details? Yeah. Yes, unfortunately, this is a very much self-aggrandizement and, uh, and a desire to make a person themselves feel special. Mm -hmm. The reality is that God wants all of God's children to desire love and to live in harmony with love and therefore live in harmony with God's laws and principles. And therefore make the world a better place. And therefore make a world a better place yeah. as, as, as a result of doing so. Yeah. And the desire to try to influence other people into doing something that you believe is right mm -hmm. um, it, by believing that you've got a special role to do so is actually out of harmony with God's love. Mm -hmm. I, I, Jesus, do not believe that I have a special role. Mm -hmm. I believe that I am one person who's discovered God's love and I was one of the first persons who, to express that, on, and particularly the first on earth. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason why I have arrived in the state that I, that, that I have over the years that I've lived. Yeah. And it's got nothing to do with God feeling that I'm specially selected or any of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. God, though, knew that certain people would have more of a disposition towards bringing the concepts of love to earth. But, but this concept that I am one of the special people and that everyone should listen to me, I, I personally do not have that myself. Mm -hmm. and, and my suggestion is that anybody who does have that has a problem with what I would classify as arrogance mm. <laughs> and, and also a, a need, a, an addictive need to feel special in some way between themselves and some parental figure, in this case, God. Yeah. God views all of her children as special and there are no single one child of God, there is no one single child of God that God views as any more special than the other. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are some people who have received more of God's love, but that is because of their own choice, mm -hmm. not because of God's choice. God gave the option of receiving love to every person, not just to a few people initially. So, so the reality is I feel that immediately this demonstrates some of Catherine's unhealed emotional con you know, condition, mm -hmm. where she's obviously, and, and I have compassion for you, Catherine, because I can feel that you've had some fairly difficult parents to live with, which has caused you to believe that, that somebody, God, hopefully, um, will view you as special. And it's actually an avoidance of some of this causal parental emotion mm -hmm. that you come to believe these kind of things. But so, so my first suggestion to Catherine is to, is to work through these issues with her parents rather than skipping over them by believing things that, that are actually out of harmony with God's principles of love. Mm -hmm. And believing that you are special or have a special role is actually out of harmony with God's love. God offers the same roles to everyone. It, it is really up to the individual as to whether they accept that, those roles or not. And yeah. And in my case, I did accept those role, that role that God offered, but God off, could have offered it to millions of others and, 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 and obviously would have if those millions of others were open to receiving it. So. Well, in a sense, God is offering us the opportunity to love and to develop ourselves at every moment. Yeah, so it? like everyone in human history had an opportunity to become the first person to receive God's love. Yeah. Everyone had that opportunity. 
and it was, it, it, it's an unfortunate state of events that it took 100 and something, 100 and more like 150,000 years before somebody decided to take up the offer. Mm. Um, now that, that's an unfortunate state of events, but, but it doesn't mean that God didn't make the offer during that period of time. It just means that there were no one was available to actually take up the offer. No one wanted to. Yeah. And God responds to desire in the individual. So, so yeah. I, and I had the choice. I could have rejected it just like everyone else did mm-hmm. um, in the first century. So, so, yeah, I feel quite strongly that we need to get over this concept that, that there are special or unique persons um, who have a special role that God has assigned. Every person, of course, has unique personality traits, mm-hmm. and God has particularly designed in each person different personality traits, which are all a part of God's nature. So, so whenever you meet another person, you've got the opportunity of meeting an, a, a, an expression, if you like, if it was in its pure state in particular, of God's nature. Mm-hmm. But, but this does not mean that God favoured them in any way. We are all favoured equally. Yeah. And in particular, when it comes to receiving God's love, God is not discriminate. God is very purposefully um, giving her love to all, or op- offering, you could say, the opportunity of receiving her love to all humanity. And, and whether you're the first one or the last one to receive it, you, you, you're all special <laughs> from God's perspective. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Catherine is sort of speaking about, you know, why she came to the planet, and that that's going to come out further in her yeah, question. Yeah, uh, again, this is a presumption of a ber- belief yeah. in reincarnation. Yeah, and uh, and obviously, again, a lot of unhealed emotions exist around the belief in reincarnation, as we shall discuss. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, I, and I sh- we should point out at this stage that we are going to have a whole series of FAQ questions about incarnation and reincarnation, yeah. as well as God's nature. So, so we are going to address a lot of these kind of questions over a time, over yeah. time, yeah. and in a more logical uh, sequence and presentation that we can do than we can do in a feedback session. But we thought we could open some of that yes. uh, at, with the with Catherine's email because it is a very common. She she may feel that she's made some major discoveries, but the reality is we've probably received a couple of thousand yeah. emails almost identical to hers, yeah. and and almost every new age person I meet has an identical statement to Catherine's, yeah. uh, which is an indication <laughs> that it's obviously based upon some emotional belief systems rather than actually some other yeah. some other thing that's yeah. causing people to believe these things yeah yeah mm. and you mentioned catherine's um you know s- parents and her, that difficult relationship and a lot of that is evidenced in the later questions as well isn't very it? much Just, so yeah. and in fact it's very evidenced in most uh, reincarnation belief systems most yeah. new age belief systems that are on this planet um and we can talk about some of the originations of those as yeah. we go through this yeah. material. But most of the belief systems are based upon some very hurt human emotions, mm-hmm. which, uh, which are then assumed to be love yeah. and then projected towards God, if God exists in the equation at all. Mm-hmm. For, the, for the majority of people who believe in reincarnation, God does not exist. And in fact, the very first people who believed in reincarnation did not have a very formulated view of God at all. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, as time's gone on, obviously the reincarnation beliefs have slowly been modified to suit um, changes, if you could say that, changes in the concepts of people. So initially reincarnation beliefs didn't, weren't based around any afterlife whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They weren't based around God's existence or a concept of a spirit world. Those concepts were added later yeah. once people became aware that they were talking to spirits yeah. and once they became aware that spirits existed, now they had to add some additional pointers into the reincarnation concepts. Yeah. And, and even now today, most New Age people don't believe in God as an as a, uh, individual entity, yeah. but rather in us all being God, yeah. all being... A, part of God yeah. and this is an indication of some of the developments that have occurred in reincarnation theories and I'm 
must state quite clearly that all of the reincarnation theories on this planet are pretty much, aside from what I've shared about how reincarnation actually occurs, or if you could call it coming back to Earth actually yeah. occurs, um, because I don't think you could really call it reincarnation given all of the false beliefs about reincarnation. Yeah, false theories <clears throat> and things out there. Yeah, all of the theories about reincarnation that are pre prevalent on the planet by all the religious forms that have those particular theories are all false. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, this is, this is something that people who are from a new age background at some point are going to have to come to terms with yeah. through their progression towards God. They will eventually arrive at that conclusion mm -hmm. once they come to have a relationship with God because God can share that truth with them. Yeah. 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 So so we we can talk a lot more about reincarnation, but we've got to ask uh, answer some specific questions she has in this particular yeah. in this yeah. particular email. Okay. So we'll keep going. Mm. Recently my path has led me to you. <laughs> Virtually all of what you say is in accord with what I have already learned, but not all. Can I just say very little of what I teach is actually in accord with what Catherine actually believes yeah. Yeah. and in fact we have some very substantial differences in in, mm -hmm. in our beliefs that um, where where she believes certain things are loving that I know for certain are not yeah. and she believes that um, there are things that I'm teaching that are unloving and I know for certain that <laughs> they are loving so yeah. you know, we have from Catherine we have some very substantial differences in belief systems mostly because most of your belief systems, even though you do not believe it at this point, are based around some very hurt human emotions that you need to address. Yeah. And once you address those particular emotions, you will find it very surprising that you ever had the belief systems that you currently hold. Yeah. So, but, but I must point out that most people who email us these particular emails believe that our belief systems and theirs are very much in in, in, in harmony with each yeah. other, in agreement with each other, and nothing could be further from the truth. No. And it's only after they start to hear more and more of mm -hmm. these presentations that they start realising that no, uh, nothing could be further from the <laughs> truth, actually. Well, there's very, as you mentioned, very, um, you know, very essential parts to our teaching about the nature of God, about the nature of love, about free will, human about soul. the human soul, all of those things. Um, in um, Catherine's laws questions. Of love, the, the way yep. God structured the universe, none of which Catherine believes in. Yeah. And she has never, ever studied it either, as yep. she claims. So, yeah. so the reality is that we have, you know, there, there is a lot for her to learn. And already she's displaying her arrogance by assuming things that are not true. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the arrogance is a huge problem if you're ever going to learn the truth from God. Mm -hmm. And this is one reason why she has not learned the truth from God, because she's very established in her own position and her own belief systems. Mm -hmm. She is assisted in doing so by some spirits who also have the same belief systems and as a result is very blocked towards receiving God's truth on the matter. Mm -hmm. Now, if she is blocked towards receiving God's truth on the matter, how can she then become a force for change on the planet as she originally claims in her yes. email? Yeah. You can't. You yeah. can't be a force for change on the planet that's, that's to do unless it, the force for change is in harmony with God's truth. Mm -hmm. And Catherine, you are way out of harmony with God's truth on many issues, which mm -hmm. we'll discuss some of in this feedback session. Yeah. <clears throat> but being so out of harmony with God's truth, you are not in the condition to share truth with other people until you bring yourself into harmony with God's truth. Then you're in the position to, to share with others and also as a subsequent result of that sharing will eventually cause some change on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She says, the disparities are few but glaring. <laughs> I'd agree. It is many, but I'd say there's many and glaring. <laughs> yeah. They leave me with questions. Yes. Now, can I just state here, the way that she has formulated her email, a lot of it is not actually questions. No. It's statements of her belief systems, which are almost argumentative in nature. Yeah. So, so this is where we talk about the inquisitiveness of a person yeah. versus the, you know, feeling of argumentative feeling that comes yeah. from people. 
People often have a very strongly, because they've spent many years, as she has done, she's 53 years old now, she's spent, or 52 years old now, mm -hmm. she's spent many years investigating um, concepts. And as a result of their investigation, they, they develop within themselves an arrogant viewpoint that they must be correct. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it's completely the opposite to that. After many years of investigation, I only know when I'm correct because of, of the harmony that I feel with God through, through the receiving God's love on the matter. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I've had to learn to give up all of my own personal opinions. Mm -hmm. When I'm asked my personal opinion, I will give it, mm -hmm. but I am not very attached to my personal opinions, as you know, I at that, all, definitely. at yeah. all. And, and this is one thing that she needs to learn, to not be personally attached to her own personal opinions. Mm -hmm. And that would cause her to, to, rather than being argumentative with her questioning, would actually cause her to be more inquisitive mm. with her questioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, okay. Here we go. With the knowledge that I am certainly not more <coughs> loving than God, and with the knowing that I would never send a precious God, uh, pr sorry, precious child, previously unconscious of itself to this place, clearly a form of hell with no man's inhumanity to man, as a first stop. I am highly sceptical of your assertion that we have no conscious awareness before coming here. Right. Can we address that statement? Okay. <laughs> Catherine, this is where your deeply held emotional injuries are already influencing your decision making and your belief systems. Um, if we can just dissect the statements that you're making here, you're basically saying in the first statement, you're basically saying that you are not as loving as God. And then on the second statement, some, you are basically disagreeing that God did something that's actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore you're believing yourself to be superior to God. And so even your own logic is not uh, very like present in, in your own argumentation. You believe that if, if, if you believe that God being perfect isn't already getting exactly what God wanted, then, then I'm afraid you're already out of harmony with God's principles. Mm -hmm. God has created everything in the universe perfect. And as a result of creating it perfectly, everything on the, on the earth is actually operating in accordance with God's plan, just as everything in the universe is operating in accordance with God's plan. Therefore, what's happening on the earth has to be in accordance with God's plan in some way. And now I've explained the way and, and, and I'll explain further what the way is. Um, but she is now saying that her concept of love is actually a superior to what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, well, what's actually happening is God's concept of love, mm -hmm. right? Which is very, very different statements. Mm -hmm. Now, Perhaps I don't know how far we go in each explanation here because we can read the entire email, but we'll have to come back to this point here and start again. Yes. So maybe what we need to do is read this entire email. Yeah, let's do and it. And then come back to this point. So if you can yep, just mark I've that point. point. Yep. And, and we'll start again and dissect it in more thoroughly so that she can see how how her belief systems are actually she believes are superior to what's actually happening yes. and therefore superior to what god's laws have allowed yes. to happen yes okay now also i wanted to clarify within your statement you just made there you said god has created everything perfectly mm -hmm. but you're not saying that what's happening on earth is in fact perfect of course Okay. Because we, we are Let's not factoring in one that, major see. consideration, which yes. we'll discuss in detail, As, yes. and that is humankind's free, free will. will. <laughs> <laughs> and this is something that she is neglecting to consider in almost all of her email. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I'll just head on through the whole lot mm -hmm. and we'll come back to this point. Yeah. Okay. I would only allow the strongest, most courageous and experienced children of mine to come here. <laughs> that or they would have to knowingly, willfully choose this terrible place through deliberate action. And only then with many, many, many opportunities from me to help them make a better choice. <laughs> 
<laughs> Therefore, from my perspective, it is not logical to believe that we are not consciously aware of our own existence to coming back to Earth, prior to coming back to Her Earth. argument immediately is completely opposite of what she's saying, but go on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it seems obvious that if human beings were imperfect, then it would not be the fault of the humans, the created, rather the fault would lie with the creator, right? <laughs> That's only logical. No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> By the way, I notice that you often blame earthly parents for imposing error upon their children. What a mess, right? <laughs> I can only conclude that we humans were are either a made perfect or b god is imperfect i choose a made perfect given that we certainly cannot deserve planet earth as our first stop straight out of the gate my children do not have to earn a place in my home at least not as children now if as adults, my children were to become willfully disobedient and make choices that cause the family pain, a result of my own poor parenting, question mark, then I would likely, at great pains to myself, insist that they live elsewhere where their unloving choices would not destroy the family. Hence, the existence of heaven, hell and or levels thereof making perfect sense to me. But not to send a fresh, precious soul to this place without full development and knowledge prior to. This Can I point out already, there is huge amounts of illogical reasoning in her statements. So, yeah. you know, this is something we're going to have to address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so this brings me to my first question. <laughs> How is sending a previously unconscious child of God to this God-forsaken place a loving act? So many false beliefs here. <laughs> <laughs> there are. But honestly, a lot of people have that feeling, don't they? Yeah, yes, so they, yes, they do. And we, we'll it, discuss why. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but again, I think I've, what I find um, difficult in listening to this email is just the arrogance of it yeah. and and Catherine yeah there's a lot of arrogance in you and it's, it's a problem that you're going to have to address it's not an inquisitive desire to know truth it's a statement that it's basically a statement that what she has already established as truth is the truth mm -hmm. and any viewpoint other than her belief is actually false mm. and she's trying to come up with very illogical reasons why they're false yeah. um, in order to support her belief that what she's come up with is true yeah. And, and I find that, you know, that, that is not a great way of learning at all. It's a very slow way of learning. And as she's pointed out at the beginning, she's had major periods of learning once every 11 years or 10 years or yeah. whatever it was. And I suggest that's why, yeah. because basically she's quite opposed to learning anything other than she's already, what she's already established to be true. Yeah. And, and, and it's not even true. It's totally illogical for a start. So yeah. therefore cannot be true. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose in reading this, I mean, I... I feel underlying a lot of these questions, a lot of pain that's unfelt. Very much so, which we'll talk and, about. But there's not even a connection to that pain. There's a, no. sort of an arrogant cover on top of some very painful emotions about. And so yes. it's the, even if in pain someone's asking this, there's more of a seeking spirit, isn't there? Yes, this is not being asked in pain, it's no. being asked in anger. Yeah. And there's a very, very different spirit there. Yeah. Yeah. This is somebody who, who believes themselves to be right before they ask a question. Yeah. And therefore, the question they're asking is not really a question. It's a statement of disagreement. And yeah. this is why we normally would not answer these kind yeah. of emails, because all we feel them to be is just statements of disagreement without any openness to actually find out the truth. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. In my seeking, I've come to believe that reincarnation is the simplest explanation for many otherwise unexplainable observations. However, I concede that another possible expl explanation might be that each soul is created with the consciousness of the entire soul family imprinted upon it, which I'm guessing is what you believe. Definitely not. <laughs> this could account for the huge disparities 
in knowledge, skills, abilities, awareness, talents, etc. between people, which I believe is explained via either previous incarnations and or previous existence in other realms. So this brings me to my second question. <laughs> Again, she's established a belief system that she basically is basing her questions upon. Yeah. This is not the way to discover truth. No. no. Yeah. So second question, how do you explain the huge disparities between, uh, between the knowledge, skills, abilities, awareness, talents, etc., of various individuals on this planet? Mm. So that's two questions. Mm -hmm. If God's laws are constant, which I do believe, and if reincarnation is not the norm for humans here on earth, about which I'm skeptical but open, I come... <laughs> <laughs> I, Sorry, Kate. <laughs> you're not open, but anyway. <laughs> I come to my third question. Mm -hmm. How is it that you and the 14 have done so? We are, after all, equally special, are we not? <laughs> I wonder why a loving God would gift some new souls with Somalia as a birthplace and others with Beverly Hills. Seems rather harsh in both cases, really. Well, is that what she says? Yep, <laughs> that's what I would say too. But anyway, uh, not about, but I wouldn't blame God for it. But anyway, let's exactly. move on. <laughs> um, now to the subject of soulmates. Mm -hmm. As most of creation is male and female, it seems possible that soul pairs might exist. However, if no one should ever meet, ever mate with anyone outside of their own original soul pair, and if most people do not meet their soulmate until they are in the fifth or sixth sphere, and if Earth is our first stop, then are you teaching that virtually no human being should mate, even for <laughs> affection, companionship, and or to procreate? Do you, believe, do you believe that most of us should be on our own, as I am now, as most saints are, are you teaching that sometimes I feel a hint of uh, Catherine's sense of humor, but anyway, are you teaching that only the lucky few who manage to find their soulmates should have a partner while here on earth? That's asking a, an awful lot of a fresh spirit soul at their first stop, don't you think? I mean, humans need each other and we are designed to couple, literally. Also, as a plan expectation, it seems a miserable failure, which, again, would be the fault of the creator, not the created, right? All human beings, wherever they are born, whenever they are born, whatever the conditions or colour of their skin, thrive when loved and wither and die to the degree which they are not loved. What horrible <laughs> God would cast her his likely mother god would never do this <laughs> some heavy emotion there uh, would never cast her brand new bright spirits to this place of darkness where they will surely feel lost and abandoned hmm. so i love your teachings aj <laughs> i can't agree <laughs> but go on <laughs> but some of them do not make logical sense hmm. It is my experience that God is always loving, always merciful, and far gentler than I could ever be. Some of your key teachings are not. Thank you again for your dedication to truth and love. Much love to you and yours. Mary is a darling, you lucky man. <laughs> In spirit, Catherine. Well, firstly, I, I feel we need to say to you, Catherine, that, that you've made a whole heap of presumptions about what I teach without actually having any knowledge or investigation of what I've taught. And there, then you've basically accused me of teaching something unloving without even knowing what I'm actually teaching. Yeah, and that, that's that, the key. That's very presumptuous yeah. and arrogant to do that. Um, you know, firstly, you, if, if I was looking at a new teaching of some kind, I would not presume that through one or two or a few videos that I've watched, I automatically now understand everything that the person's teaching. Mm -hmm. And that's something that happens frequently, unfortunately, with emails that we receive where they watch one video, make a whole heap of presumptions, 
sent and then make a whole heap of questions based on those presumptions and even like some of this email thinly veiled attack really mm. um, based on based on the presumptions without even investigating the truth so so I feel again that's a very poor method of learning and, and in sorry go ahead go on. well in fact you have answered most of these questions of course. in the course of many many seminars more than one of course so uh, but uh, we understand in fact every one of these questions we've addressed somewhere 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 but there are a lot of, of hours of a, video yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, i understand yeah, that yeah. and that's why and that's why we do need to make an faq series on the subject yeah. that's more easily able to be uh, just brief videos and, yeah, yeah brief videos that are presented in a logical sequence yeah. to enable people to come to an understanding of the truth and questions like this can be incorporated into those series of logical presentations. Yeah. Unfortunately, what's happened for most of our recorded presentations with groups is that people have often waylaid my presentation mm -hmm. or manipulated, you know, through their questions, my, my presentation to be right off topic. And the reason why this is, is the same reason why mm -hmm. uh, Catherine is doing it here in her email. And that is because they already have a whole heap of belief systems that are being challenged uh, through every statement that's being made yeah. and this raises a whole heap of questions and unfortunately the world today rather than listening to the whole answer starts asking questions based on their belief systems mm -hmm. wanting to hold on to their belief systems mm -hmm. and so you end up in a situation where you can't actually say the answers yeah. because people have been questioning so much and you and and are not even open to hearing the answers unless you overcome their obstacles yeah. now if you read books like like the life Elysian and the gate of heaven and and through the mist you'll see that there's many times when the spirits who are teaching Frederick or Afra in the book and um, get him to stop asking questions <laughs> and just listen firstly to the explanation because the explanation will actually get rid of most of his questions yeah. and this is an unfortunate problem with many people on earth they don't listen long enough in order to have their questions answered they they we're, we're discussing with people some very important life-based questions that most people have been asking for thousands of years mm. and never received an answer mm -hmm. for it you're not going to be able to answer these very important questions in one or two hours mm. it's going to require an investigation that's quite long and it's going to also require an openness to hearing that the explanations without having to overcome every single personal belief system that's an obstacle to mm. hearing the truth mm. and this is the problem here is that Catherine has many internal emotional reasons why she has obstacles to hearing the truth and as one of those obstacles is the presumption that she can listen to something just for a few hours and understand everything about it, mm -hmm. which is actually not true. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for example, if you, if you just look at one scientific form of endeavor, many people have to study it from four years and then they consider to be a basic learner yeah. on the subject. Now, with regard to universal matters, surely uh, it would require even more study. So <laughs> well, it's the it's basically essentially understanding yourself and the universe that you live in. It's the most important education that, that you'll, you'll ever receive. receive. And, and it's worthy of time and attention and it requires it, doesn't it? And then not only that, we have the other impediment and that is on earth, as Catherine already believes herself to be highly educated in love yeah. when she is actually in a fairly poor condition of love, yeah. as we will demonstrate. Um, and sorry, Catherine, I'm not saying this to antagonise you or anything. I'm just saying this is the case. Yeah. You are in the same condition of love as the people you criticise, actually, yeah. which I'll demonstrate through your email. But but the sad thing of that is that they then judge love on based on their own opinions mm -hmm. and, and therefore are not open to receiving God's love and, and therefore with God's love comes God's truth. So mm. without receiving God's love, you are not able to determine God's truth. Mm -hmm. And so this is why argumentative reasoning along the aspect of, in this case, it's reincarnation. In, in other cases, it's Christianity. In yeah. other cases, it's Islam. Yeah. In other, like we get all sorts of emails very similar to this, just on a completely different religious mm -hmm. belief system yeah. that's been indoctrinated into the person over many years of what they call their own investigation. Mm -hmm. And none of these investigations are open nor truthful because none of them rely on the reception of God's love first and an openness to receiving what God wants to tell you about the, the truth of the universe. Yeah. So, so the very first thing we need to say here, the way to learn truth 
is to receive God's love first. And if you're not receiving God's love, then you are not going to understand God's truth. Mm -hmm. It's quite simple. Mm -hmm. You are not going to understand God's truth. You can theorize as much as you wish. You are not going to understand. Mm. And this is the problem. You can theorize based on your beliefs about what love is without receiving God's love, and you will never understand how God has designed the universe. And yet God has designed the universe in such a way that it's so easy to understand when you've received some of God's love. Yeah. So, so my suggestion to any person who's investigating truth is first focus on receiving God's love because all of those questions you have will be answered through the process of receiving God's love. Mm -hmm. That's how I know the answers to many questions, not because of anything I personally have come up with as an idea or a concept. Yeah. All of the ideas and concepts that I now present to others have been presented to me. Yeah. So, so they have been presented to me through my relationship with God. No other way have I received them. Mm -hmm. And, and I suggest to everybody that if they all engage the same process, they will all arrive at the same conclusions, mm -hmm. right? And we can argue about what a person believes or what they don't believe. And to me, these arguments are almost pointless because unless the person receives God's love first, which is the reason why in the first century I focus people on receiving God's love first, yeah. and the reason why now I do the same thing, yeah. focusing on, on receiving God's love first, is because without God's love, you will not understand how God has designed the universe and or your place in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the first thing we need to say, yeah. I feel, in answering this particular question. Yeah. So okay, should we so go back to the... Yes. What if I um, present the question, the first question, and then go back to the point in the preamble and we can answer the question in the context of the preamble or we'll just go back to the preamble? The problem with that from my perspective is the questions themselves are already flawed in, yeah. in, their, in the question, the way the question is being constructed yeah. Yeah. because the question itself already makes a number of assumptions that are false. Mm -hmm. And the problem with answering questions like this is that if you're making a number of assumptions of something that's false and then making a question, I've got to go through all the th assumptions you're making yeah. that are false first yeah. and then we can get to the question and actually deal with the question. So okay, let's I, do I think that. perhaps the best way to address this particular email is which, and I must emphasize this, Catherine, you are not alone in sending us these emails. There are literally thousands of people who send us the send us these kind of emails, yeah. and and my the especially this issue about reincarnation and ha how sending a previously unconscious child. Well, it's not only that issue. We get the same kind of email from Christians yes, and the same yes, kind yes. of email from people, like I said, of all yeah. different religious faiths. Yeah. It's it's the this kind of email which is making a whole heap of false assumptions mm -hmm. about what I'm teaching many times because they have not actually listened to anything that mm -hmm. I've taught really or very little of what mm -hmm. I've taught, make a whole heap of false assumptions, make a whole heap of false assumptions about their own belief systems mm -hmm. which, are, which often come from unhealed emotional conditions. Then they ask a question which is so full of false assumptions that it's impossible to answer the question without going over every single false assumption being yeah. made. Yeah. And and this is what we will try to do here, but it might take us more than one or two sessions <laughs> to do it. We might okay. be, unfortunately for the guys who are recording, we might be <laughs> here next week doing it, <laughs> if, uh, depending on how long we take on each, because almost every, every sentence contains three or four false assumptions. Yes. And, so, and so we need to go through every one of these false assumptions and talk about why they're false. And then when, when we get to the question, I think by the time we get to the question, the, the question answered. is probably the answer to the question will be self-evident. Yeah. Okay, so um, the part we read earlier, basically Catherine is saying this is a horrible, horrible place. Um, why would you send a child here? I'll go on now. I would only... Can, can I firstly say, yeah. this is not a horrible, horrible place. <laughs> it yeah. is made horrible yes. by people's choices and decisions. This is a very important thing that we need to understand and something that Catherine does not wish to understand mm -hmm. or to actually accept. Mm -hmm. She wants, and we'll talk about why, she wants God to be a rescuer mm -hmm. or God to place us here out of punishment of some kind. 
or out of some kind of um, endurance sport yeah. or a, like a... Well, it's all punishment if yeah. you examine it. It's very yeah. unloving. So yeah. what, she's, what she's actually attributing to God is some very unloving emotions. Mm -hmm. And, and she's not even realising she's doing so because at the time she's actually making statements that she believes God is perfected in love. Yes. And, and so, and yet attributing a whole heap of very unloving emotions to God, yeah. who's meant to be perfected in love. <laughs> okay. So let's go through. So movie, let's right? go through. The first part we read about how terrible it is here on earth. Yeah. I would only allow the strongest, most courageous. No, can we start earlier? Because Start right. No, no, start where we had the mark. That is where we had the mark. Uh, uh, no, there was a statement made before then. Yes, so you want me to start yeah, no, right at the beginning. Let's start there. Yeah. Yep. With the knowledge that I'm certainly not more loving than God, and with the knowing <laughs> that I would never send a precious child previously unconscious of itself to this place. Yeah, can I just say straight away, the first part of the statement she's saying she's not more loving than God. Mm -hmm. The second part of the statement she's saying that she would never send a, a, a child to this place. Yeah. But God has sent children to this place. <laughs> well, is she saying one that's unconscious of itself? Well, even conscious or unconscious, yep. it's still a bad place. Yeah. So, so, like, at the end of the day, why would... The question becomes, why would a loving God... Send anyone. Send to anybody it. to a place, anybody, whether they are conscious or unconscious... Yes. ...to a place that God knows to be unloving? Yes. Why would God do that? There must be a reason. If God is loving, there must be a reason for doing so. Yeah. She's basically saying no, she's, she can see no reason mm -hmm. and therefore it can't be happening. Yeah. But it is actually happening. The reality is people, whether they're conscious or not, and let's face it, if we look at humanity at the moment, we'd have to say the majority are unconscious. Definitely. Therefore, if being unconscious, they've come here being sent to a place that's unloving. Yeah. So let's look at the facts. The and facts are quite clear. Yeah. People who are unconscious are being sent <laughs> yeah. to a place that's unloving. And certainly... <laughs> so that's the fact. <laughs> yes. A newborn baby is literally unconscious of itself as a separate entity. Yeah, because it doesn't have a reasoning cogn cognitive uh, it's not, mind. It, so therefore it it's unconscious. It goes through development and yeah. becoming aware of itself. Yes. So it is unconscious. So th let's get to the facts. The yeah. facts are, yes, if there is a God who's doing this, then God is certainly sending us to this place. Unconscious. And, and <laughs> unconscious or conscious doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. <laughs> most people we know are unconscious because the world itself demonstrates that most people are unconscious, yeah. particularly when it comes to love. Yeah. And the fact is that God sent people here. Yes. Right? It's not a disputable fact. No. It's the fact. And any kind of <laughs> rationalisation with a, a new age re reincarnation theory that says, oh, no, we were conscious before we came, so it's okay, to me doesn't hold any water because the fact is when you get here, you're unconscious. So how is it and different? And here we hit our first emotional reason. Yes. The first emotional reason for this kind of thinking is that I can't believe mm -hmm. that a loving God would send me to a place that's unloving. Yeah. That's the emotion that we, yeah. we don't, I want, don't to want to feel. feel. I don't want to feel that. I want to believe that, uh, that there must be some explanation for me being here that I got no awareness of. <laughs> right? But I must have chosen that it, I not God. That I must have chosen yeah. it, not God, yeah. because God, if God was loving, would never choose to send me here. Yeah. 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 So, so there's a lot of already presumptions that are based on unhealed emotions. Mm -hmm. The unhealed emotion is this emotion that, that we, we, don't have, we, we don't have bad experiences because of our own choices. We have bad experiences because of somebody else's choices mm. is, the, is the actual underlying is the belief system. Is it that it's because we have bad experiences because of our choices, is it not? Because we've chosen to come here? Well, that, no, that's what, it, that's what she's saying. She's yes. saying that we chose to come here through some kind of yep. choice. Yep. Uh, and why we would make such an insane choice ourselves, I do not know. No. If we were conscious, we yep. certainly wouldn't make that particular no. choice. Yep. And so, therefore, it would tend to indicate that, that it was an unconscious one. Yes. Because if we were consciously making a choice to come to Earth, then why would you do that? You yep. know, There has to be a reason for Earth being in the condition that it currently is in. Mm -hmm. And basically what she's saying is that it's all God's fault that the Earth that is the in Earth this is condition. In Condition. And, and not humanity's fault. <laughs> and that's the crux of and this entire question for me. Well, for me, there's of... so many yeah. things that are a part yeah. of the false belief systems here. You know, this whole concept that that 
oh, the earth being in the condition it's in is God's fault mm, that's... when God gave humanity free will. So therefore, uh, like, where's the responsibility? This and, is the thing for me. The and this is where yeah, we get to get to, we see some real problems. Yeah. Basically, Catherine, you do not want to take responsibility for your choices and actions, and you don't want to take the responsibility for choices and actions that you have that are on earth that affect other people. And it, that is a reflection of the fact that humankind generally as a collective does not want to take responsibility yes, but, for their actions. But I have said to Catherine she doesn't want it. She would disagree yeah, with me completely. completely yeah. She would. However, the fact is that the country itself that she lives in mm -hmm. does that. Yeah. And she supports that country by living there, obviously. Yeah. Every country on the planet does that. Yeah. So we are all contributors to the badness on the planet unless we get into a better condition of love. Mm -hmm. And certainly this is not a better condition of love, believing that we shouldn't have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for things that we have done and other people have done yeah. on this planet. Yeah. Is, is, is ludicrous from and, God's perspective and, and that, we'll talk about why. That the people on earth when we incarnate here and are, are not responsible for the hellish condition, it's God who's responsible for us coming into this hellish condition. Yeah, anyway. No, no but, but what we need to say here is this. Okay. God created free will. In fact, if God hadn't done so, it's a beautiful gift because mm -hmm. if God hadn't done so, we would all be robots. And mm -hmm. we're certainly, we, 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 what's the point of creating a being that's capable of being a sentient being, a being mm -hmm. that's able to make its own choices and decisions, uh, only to make them a robot? Yeah. Of course, it makes no sense whatsoever mm -hmm. to do that. So God gave us this beautiful gift of free will. Mm -hmm. We, as responsible beings, mm -hmm. must learn how to use this gift in harmony with love if we are ever going to experience a loving earth. Mm -hmm. The fact that the earth is in loving is completely the result of our individual choice. And every single person on this planet at some point has made these individual choices. Mm -hmm. Our individual choices, which are out of harmony with love, which we continue to engage. Mm -hmm. And because of these individual choices that each of us make and collective choices that collectively we make, mm -hmm. we have the current result, mm -hmm. which is the exact result that God planned for us to have if we chose to live out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. God made a perfect system and the perfect system is this. If you live in harmony with love, you will receive a much and have a much happier life. We have a very and happy life. Well, you'd have an extremely blissful life, in yeah, fact, yeah. if you receive God's love. Yeah. And if you do not live in harmony with love, you are going to have a very unhappy life. And even Catherine's own unhappiness mm -hmm. is the result of her own decisions to live mm -hmm. out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so each of us on this earth need to come to understand that God created us as self-responsible beings. God is not going to come to our rescue when we have been the person who created the problem. Mm -hmm. No parent would come to the rescue, no decent parent would come to the rescue of a child who is not repentant and mm -hmm. who does not see their faults. And, and who doesn't want to take responsibility and for their unloving actions. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And who does not see that their unloving actions are, are unloving mm -hmm. and who has no desire to change their actions. Any responsible parent would not come to the rescue of that child mm -hmm. under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. God is more loving than us, so therefore God will not ever come mm -hmm. to our rescue, humanity's rescue, unless we engage a process with God for that to occur. And that process obviously has to involve our personally seeing mm -hmm. our personal responsibility for the unloving things we've created in our life and also the collective responsibility for the unloving things collectively we've created. Mm -hmm. And while it's true that the child, the newborn, in its first incarnation, completely unaware, is not responsible for these terrible conditions, not, neither is God. It is the people on earth who are responsible. Correct. And so and, and to blame let's face God it, these for people the innocent chose child. Yes. To be, 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 God, didn't, God made it possible. The mechanism for The mechanism possible. possible. But these people chose to have children as well. Yes. So no, they not them. only, no, before then, these people were unconsciously in, this, in the spirit world not coming to this earth yep. and, and therefore, you know, not incarnating. 
and therefore not, not having to suffer yeah. from, from these things. It's only by humans' choice to procreate yeah. Yeah. that actually brought these particular people to yeah. Earth. And then it was humans' choice to actually give these people a terrible amount of damaged emotions and treatment, which of course causes pain and yeah. suffering. And partly I feel that the God has given us this beautiful um, opportunity to procreate in order to sensitize us in, in so many of ways course. there's so many ways that god's attempting if to you, sensitize us to the use of our if will if you cannot be it learn to treat a child lovingly yeah. then i suggest that you're almost beyond redemption yeah unless you when i say beyond redemption there's no such thing yeah. and that's why i say almost beyond <laughs> yeah. redemption it's going to require a huge amount of an attitude of repentance mm -hmm. uh, 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 and even self-awareness to see how humanity treats children. Humanity treats children today terribly. Perfect. And and the reality is how we treat children, we don't even treat adults that way. Mm -mm. And in fact, the laws that govern the treatment of adults on almost every country, including the USA, mm -hmm. right, actually are more favorable towards an adult than yeah. they are towards children. Yeah. So that, that's how bad it is. Yeah. Even the country that people believe has the most amount of freedom has the least amount you know is the same as every other country in terms of the freedom of the child the and child the, to develop the and grow. respect for the child the the love of the child the yep. whole thing yep. and so when Catherine goes on to say that this place is clearly a form of hell with it, it, men's it inhumanity to man i agree, I agree with but that that's statement. not god's fault that's Humankind. Him, correct. Man, man's humanity, inhumanity in to, to man. man is man's choice. Yeah. And, and it's interesting that she uses man's mm -hmm. choice or human choice. But the reality is there are, so, there are just as many women on this planet mm -hmm. who are making these choices as men. Yeah. So, so which she don't doesn't think, believe, obviously. Which she doesn't believe based on some, some other comments point. she's made. But, but, but we made to make very clear that there are many unloving human emotions that come specifically from women, yeah. right? And just as there are many unloving emotions that come specifically from men. Yeah. And, and any woman who believes differently is already out of harmony with the truth yes. as well. <laughs> and the truth is the unconscious child isn't born wishing to use their will out of harmony with love. They no. grow into that. And because well, of the, the way most... Can I clarify? Sorry. They're not born wishing to use their will in any way whatsoever. They're completely unaware of their will. Yes. And the whole reason why they're here is to learn about the way in which they use their will. That they have will and that they can use it in, yes. in one of these directions. But what I was going to say, the point about men and women is that the way that most cultures on the planet exist right now means that women are more involved in child rearing and in the and child's shaping of how they decide to use their will. And therefore more responsible for the unloving behaviour on the yep. planet. And that can feel pretty heavy as a mum, but it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So when I say more responsible, I, I believe there's an equal responsibility, but unfortunately with the way that women have most of the... Uh, responsibilities to bring up the child that it is it is the, the most of the badness that occurs on the earth is the result of the way women bring up children yeah and we shouldn't say men are not men are responsible for neglecting their their parts in parenting and yes and if, a... and if both parents were in a loving state and both parents actively involved in bringing up children then it would be a completely different world. Well, you wouldn't see inhumanity to each other, would you? It no, would end. No. So this anyway. But but it, it's silly to say that a man wouldn't do a woman wouldn't do something than a man does. I observe every single day many women doing worse things than ma ma many men that I observe. So you know the reality is that doing something in badness or doing wrongdoing from God's perspective is not dependent on what gender you are. Certainly it's got not. everything to do with your choices that are unloving. Yeah. And especially like in Western countries where where women, yeah, anyway, I, I could go on and on about the fact that, yeah. Yeah, the, the reality, yeah, be more specific. Yeah, well, in, in Western countries where women do now um, exercise a lot of um, power, power yep. that they are able to make a lot of choices and decisions they exert their will um, 
and I know in some spheres it's not quite equal with men, but in other spheres it's far more men are not equal to women. And in the West I see that women still wish to disclaim responsibility for the unloving use of their will when in fact... Well, uh, what I notice is that it's even worse than that. Many women believe they're using their will lovingly yes. when from God's perspective they are very unloving. Yes. And this is, this is in particular in, in their responsibilities as being a mother yeah. and all of their projections towards a child that are based on addictive mm -hmm. emotions. Which are very damaging. Which are very damaging for children. children. So, so yes, I, yeah. cannot, I cannot agree with any statement that's ever made by any person saying that one gender ha is, is in a better condition than another in the, on this planet at this point in time. Yeah. And the reality is, historically, that has been the case when, when men were, and, and, and in dominant, some countries yeah. that is the case, yeah. like, you know, in countries where men are still domineering over women, yeah. still harming women, still almost, uh, you know, raping women every day even in mm -hmm. a marriage mm -hmm. you know these kind of uh, Which, these kind of environments obviously the women are in a better condition yeah but but uh, unfortunately the women in those locations damage their children almost as much as the women in western countries yeah because they cause their children to believe that they should accept such treatment yeah uh, by their fear yeah so so fear is a dominant problem in mm -hmm. women and it causes huge amounts of unloving behavior on this planet yeah, it does. So, so women and men have a, have a combined responsibility yeah. to address these particular issues. And if you believe you're a woman and therefore you're superior, already you're inferior from God's perspective <laughs> by believing you're superior. <laughs> you're in a lesser condition. You're already, yeah. <laughs> you're already in a lesser condition of love from God's perspective yeah. by believing you're superior. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay, so this she's saying this place is clearly a form of hell. Um, so can I can I state? Yes, it is a clearly a form of hell, but created by people specifically. Yeah. God, when God originally created the earth, it was a beautiful paradise. And when God placed the first human couple in here, they were perfect in love, mm -hmm. in the sense that they, but they had not much, they hadn't learned how to exercise their will, yep. yet in harmony with love, yep. but everything was perfect. Yep. So, so, so it's not God's fault that mankind then caused the destruction of their own home. Yes, and <laughs> if I look at God's creation on earth, I don't find it hellish. The things that God has created, definitely not. Just stunning. Yeah. They're just all stunning. in recovery all the time. They're yeah. all trying to improve constantly, things constantly. Just an amazing design, inherently built to heal, to grow, to change. Yeah. Physically beautiful, gift giving. All of God's creations give. Yeah. Um, there's just so many beautiful and you things. And you compare that with human creation. Obviously, you see a marked difference. Yeah. Uh, mark, yeah. All of human creations are destructive. They destroy the environment. They destroy. You know. They destroy yeah. people. Yeah. They. You know. Many times we're reliant, and particularly the U.S. economy mm -hmm. of where where Catherine lives mm -hmm. is completely reliant on the destruction of other peoples. Yeah. Because and and in fact, one third of Catherine's wealth Wealth is completely the result of arms manufacture in the USA getting sold to other places which use it for destruction. Yeah. So, so the reality is Catherine contributes right at this moment to one third of all of the destruction that occurs on this planet mm. through her actions. When I say her personally, her country, person her country yeah. is contributing to, yeah. to and, and her own welfare yeah. one third of all the money that goes in and out of her pocket mm -hmm. is the result of arms manufacture yeah <laughs> yeah which is so, stunning isn't it statistic yes and, and uh, it's a stunning statistic but but the reality is if if a person in the usa believes that they're not you know not responsible for that then then well, from god's perspective they yeah. are way out of harmony with self-awareness yes and the affluence that a person enjoys in their uh, the basis of their economy, where that comes from, is completely, you know, that's a part of... You imagine their... going to the USA and taking one third of everyone's property, wealth, like... One third of the, the everything uh, services, away one from third them of the roads, immediately, all that, yeah. and how much of a huge... Like, I'm, I'm quite sure there'd be uncontrollable riots mm. in the USA mm -hmm. if, if that occurred overnight. Mm -hmm. and, and that is those people's... Mm -hmm 
lack of desire to address that particular issue. And sense of entitlement <coughs> to what mm-hmm. they have. Otherwise, yes. they wouldn't feel angry when it was yes. taken away. So if someone yeah. came, Catherine, to you tonight and stole one third of all of everything you have, mm-hmm. I'm sure you'd be, out, you, you, you'd, you'd be majorly affected upset, by yeah. that and yeah. upset by it. And you'd wonder what right they have and whatever, when that is exactly what the US has been doing to pretty much every country that countries. it involves with on this planet. Well, a lot of, you know, uh, anyway, <laughs> well, I get really political. Well, but this is where this. we need to see. We need to see that each of us on this planet are contributing to the unloving things that are occurring on yeah. this planet. And we need to take personal responsibility for that. And we de- do need to stop blaming God for it. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it is ludicrous to blame someone who actually did everything lovingly yeah. um, for something that is very unloving that we ourselves are doing. It's, it's also hypocritical yeah. to, to, to like, it was, it's like me saying you, if you were doing everything perfectly it's, and it's like me cre- going off and creating a whole heap of bad things and then saying it's all your fault mm-hmm. <laughs> when you had nothing to do yeah. with it. Yeah. Like, what, what a hypocrite. Yeah, yeah. And, and we've got to get away from this hypocrisy if we're ever going to have a positive effect on this planet. It's actually more than that, isn't it? It's like me giving you this whole heap of gifts and tools, yes. all for free, all, all which totally, I abuse. yeah, and then you going and abusing everything that I've just given you yeah. and, and making blaming, a huge mess and, and then, then blaming, blaming me for giving the for gift. Giving a gift. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty bad. Well, and this is it's exactly not logical. What, yeah. It's exactly what. Catherine is doing yeah. in her reasoning, in yeah. her argumentation. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, so where are we up to? Where well, are we up to? We've got like a couple of <laughs> sentences go. again. But I think we're covering a lot of the points. Um, so she says she's highly sceptical of your assertion that we have no <laughs> conscious awareness before coming here. Can I point out, she might be highly sceptical of my assertion. I've lived it. She has not. Yeah. So, so, so at the end of the day, like I'm completely aware of what I of what I've lived, and therefore aware of what I'm saying being true. Yeah. She has not lived it, so it's all postulation and theorising and and philosophising on her part. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm okay with her being sceptical. Mm-hmm. That's fine. She can be sceptical for as long as she's sceptical. Will be as long as she doesn't learn the truth about it, yeah, right? Yeah. And and she can remain sceptical for the rest of her life if she so yeah. desires. I've lived it, so I already know. <laughs> I suppose yes, and I suppose when I read Catherine's question, what I feel underlying it is a terrible amount of grief from her own childhood, feeling innocent and feeling treated terribly. Yeah, and not... I'm sorry. I I don't feel the innocence in her yet. Yes, there's no innocence in her yet. Like, but there is a feeling of injustice within her that oh, is not in, being grieved. But it's a rage. Yes, it's, it's not. Yes. It's, there's no grieving of it. No, it's a rage about the injustice, yes. which is actually the cause of a lot of false religious belief systems, mm-hmm. including the false religious belief of reincarnation. Mm-hmm. And and not dealing with this rage causes you, and not even and being in complete denial that you even have it, causes you to come up with. A whole heap of unloving belief systems that 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 just exacerbate the problem. They don't solve it. Yeah. So so, you know, for Ka- Catherine needs to sensitise herself to her own sadness. Mm. But the majority of people we find in Western countries are so insensitive to their own sadness, mm-hmm. and they are in so much anger mm-hmm. that it's very very difficult for them to sensitize themselves to this sadness and therefore work through why they have the have, have established the belief systems they've established. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, I would only allow the strongest, most courageous and experienced children of mine to come here. Yeah, well, let's I guess, comment about that. She would only allow? Can she see already that her parenting would be out of harmony with God's? God allows us to choose anything. Mm-hmm. She is not going to allow her children to choose anything. This is one of the problems she has. She, she, she herself, as a parent, would not allow her children to choose anything. Mm. 
right, without mm. her trying to influence every decision she, they make, mm. which she actually states in her email. Yes, yeah, she says after that, that or they would have to knowingly, willfully choose this terrible place through deliberate action and only then with many, many, many opportunities from me to help them make a better choice, which in is a, basically saying yeah, I would try to In other words, she's otherwise. going to browbeat them yep. into making the choice she believes they should make. Mm-hmm. She, she is so out of harmony with God's love here. God does not do that. Mm -hmm. God allows us to make every single choice without a single without a single piece of influence from God. Well, this is how we understand the power of our own will. Correct. If that's why God does it. Yes. Yeah. That's the important point. And 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 the fact that she, as a parent, would not do that Mm -hmm. is already indicating one of the reasons why the world is in so much Mm -hmm. turmoil. Is because when a child has an opportunity to do something that actually is loving, if the parent doesn't believe it's loving, they Mm. stop them from doing it. And she would do that. Yes. She would do that. And this is why she is out of harmony with God's principle of love. Mm -hmm. God would never do that. Mm -hmm. God God is a person who who has given us the gift of free will and then allows us to make any choice, Mm -hmm. any choice Mm -hmm. that we so desire. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's consequences for all choices. Well, that's or, the point. Or benefits to all choices, and that's the point. That we understand that. That that's we come understanding to understand the that. power of our will, yes. knowing that for every action we take, there's a consequence. There's a positive a, or negative. Yeah. 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 There's a consequence that's positive or negative. And that's why it's so powerful, because we have the of power course. to influence everything, everything. around us, yes. positively or negatively. Or negatively. And we are making that choice. Yes. And she wouldn't minute. give her children that gift. She's already stating that. Yeah. So, yeah. so she, she is already stating that she wouldn't give the gift of free will or if it's so-called free will, she would heavily influence that will, mm-hmm. which, is what the, which is the attitude the majority parents. of parents have yeah. on this planet. There's a strong theme, isn't there, in this, um, this type of argument, which is about um, people not wanting to be responsible for their own use of will, not wanting their children to be responsible for their use of will, tra- yeah. trying to... Trying to blame the parent for the yeah. child's choices. Yeah. Trying the child wanting the parent to be responsible for the child's yep. choices and so forth. Yes, which is all missing the in, entire lesson about free about will, love, at, which is loving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. about yeah. God's love. The, like yeah. the intensity of God's love is such that the majority of people asking these questions have no awareness whatsoever yeah. of how much God loves us yeah. and how much and why God, through that intense amount of love, has designed the system that God has designed. Yeah. And, and it's wonderful once it's you beautiful. understand it. Yeah. But, but the majority of people don't understand it because they've never received any of God's love to know yeah. what it feels like. And so what they do is they attribute human concepts of love, and this is one of them, mm-hmm. the human concept of love being the parent has to influence the child if it sees the child doing something the parent disagrees with. Mm-hmm. The parent will influence the child as away much as possible from away yeah. from making that decision or mm-hmm. choice rather than waiting to see whether the child's asking for that influence. Yes. Right. This is one of the main reasons why we have so many problems on this planet. In fact, Mm -hmm. what she would do here Mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why there are so many problems because parents take this role and and they they browbeat their children into submission to their own ideals. Mm. And God doesn't even do that. Mm -mm. So, you know, there's a big error here. Yes. Big error that needs to be addressed emotionally. Uh, She says, therefore, from my perspective, it's not logical to believe that we are not consciously aware of our own existence prior to coming to planet Earth. Yes, but it's not logical to believe that we are either. No. Because why would you come here otherwise? (laughs) (laughs) Like, like, Well, I suppose she's saying... She's... Well, I don't want to put words in Well, she's basically saying that it's, it's not logical to believe that we made the choice to come here, well, so that we made no choice to come here. Mm-hmm. That's what she's saying. She is. But it's not logical to believe that we made a choice to come here given the state of it either, <laughs> if, no. she, if we use her logic. Yeah, and she's <laughs> saying that basically we have to be on some kind of kamikaze mission to come here because, you know, God would really try and talk us out of it anyway. Yeah. So we, we've got some kind of, what do you call that, masochistic tendency or oh, self-hatred. some... Self-hatred. So, yeah, self-hatred or some kind of noble purpose to come back here. Yeah. Yeah. When, when usually, what, the, again, presumptive, presum, uh, huge presumptions mm-hmm. about, about what's happening. Actually, the most simple explanation is the one I've given, mm. and that is, no, 
the system, the way the system is currently working is exactly the way God intended it to work. Mm. And it's, it, we know that at the point of incarnation, at the birth of a child, it is not conscious. So it's having some kind of intellectual re- rationalization that they were conscious nine months ago, it, it's, it hardly helps them. <laughs> no, because um, they, they're born now and they still don't feel conscious. Yes, yes. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it doesn't help at all. No. And in fact, it's quite cruel. Yeah. Fancy losing consciousness. Yeah. That's quite cruel, isn't it? Yeah. Unless it was done by choice. Yes. It was very cruel. Which is, which and is she's why. saying it's done by choice. Yeah, which is but, why she's come up with that belief system. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, I but feel it's it, also, sorry, I feel ahead. the problem is, yeah, I feel... Even in the discussion, you're muddying the waters a bit because there's so many things that could be said here that I've now forgotten what to say. And, and, but a really important statements Mm -hmm. that need to be made about the belief, these kind of belief systems. So if you can read it again, maybe I can just, just that last statement. The last statement. It's very important. Therefore, from my perspective, it is not logical to believe that we are not consciously aware of our own existence prior to coming to planet Earth. Firstly, Catherine is not being logical. She's unca- incapable of being logical, in fact, mm-hmm. because of her unhealed emotional injuries from her own childhood that she's yet to heal. Mm-hmm. So she's incapable of logic. Give up the concept that you're capable of logic. Mm-hmm. Secondly, you're not capable of thinking greater than the way God thinks. Mm-hmm. So don't believe you are. Thirdly, don't believe that, that if something is happening on this planet that it wasn't God's intention. Mm-hmm. It was God's intention that what's happening on this planet right now would happen. Mm-hmm. Now, now what I, when I say that, let's clarify what I mean. It was God's intention that if humankind chose to do things out of harmony with love, humankind would bear the consequences of such a decision. Mm-hmm. It's God's intention that if humankind choose to live in harmony with love, that humankind will bear the benefits of such a decision. Mm-hmm. That is God's cho- God, God purposely made this world and the universe like that. Mm-hmm. And, and we cannot then say that, that we can't then assume that, oh, the way we have things running on the earth now doesn't feel very good, so surely God didn't intend it. No, God's perfect. God intended exactly what is happening right now to happen, but God knows the reason why it's happening is not because of God wants it to happen, in the sense that God's personal choice would be for it to happen. God's not up there desiring for this to happen. No, no. Humankind chose. And this is where we get to this concept that people must understand. We have chosen collectively and individually, and, and Catherine is still individually choosing mm-hmm. to do things out of harmony with love. We have chosen collectively and individually to do things out of harmony with love. There, we, there It is guaranteed there will be negative, painful, and suffering-based consequences for those particular choices. Mm -hmm. We cannot attribute our choices to another being, Mm -hmm. God or another, Mm -hmm. because God or another were not responsible for our decisions. We made the decision. Mm -hmm. And whether reincarnation or not exists at this point in the discussion, we're still responsible for the decision according to the principles of reincarnation. Yeah. So we made the decision. Yeah. So either way, we made the decision, mm-hmm. right? So, so if we've made a decision that's unloving and we therefore bear the consequences of that decision, we cannot go around blaming some God mm-hmm. for being unloving. Mm-hmm. And we also cannot measure what's happening on earth as being God's intention in terms of God's personal intention. Mm-hmm. God's intention was to create a humanity that had free will. God knew that humanity may choose to use that will out of harmony with love. God put in a whole heap of safeguards so that when humanity used their will out of harmony with love, there would be penalties. Mm -hmm. The penalty of pain and suffering being one of those penalties. Mm -hmm. God hoped that the penalty would demonstrate not to do it. Mm -hmm. Just like if you put your hand on a fire and you burn your fingers, you go, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that again. (laughs) Exactly the same thing. But as we've discussed in other presentations, including the recent one we did on sin and redemption about Mm -hmm. the pageant messages, humanity continues to make a different choice. They continue thinking that God's rules, while they apply physically to touching a hot stove, they don't apply emotionally or spiritually. And that's ludicrous. They obviously apply to all aspects of our life, emotionally and spiritually and physically. And, And therefore, we need to see that the choices we are making cause the results we've got. Now, 
if God gave us the ability to have, have free will, and then God chose to take away from us the responsibility of the actions that we have taken mm -hmm. and the consequences that they've brought, mm -hmm. then God, not only would God be breaking his own laws, but God would also be taking away responsibility for our actions mm -hmm. from humanity. In which case we would never learn anything. We would not learn a single thing. Yeah. We would not learn the consequence, the, the consequence of an unloving use or a loving use of our will. We wouldn't actually learn about the nature of love, would we? Not at all. And we wouldn't learn about the nature of hate either. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would not learn about any of these things. Mm -hmm. We would not see the negative consequences, you know, that cause the pain and suffering. We won't see the causes of those things. And we won't see the things that cause our pleasure mm. either, our real pleasure, our long-term happiness and pleasure. Mm. And so it's essential for us to see that it is because of humanity's choice, mm. collectively and individually, mm -hmm. that we have the pain and suffering that we have on this planet. And God will not rescue us from it without our engaging God in the process of mm -hmm. rescue. Mm -hmm. God's not going to come along and force a rescue. So, so what she's basically saying, and this is why a whole set of other beliefs called Christianity, Christianity. were created, to teach that God would come mm -hmm. and actually rescue humanity, mm -hmm. and God would come and force the people who were doing the wrong thing to be killed or you know, constrained mm -hmm. in some way, right? And that teaching is just as false as the teaching she is postulating of reincarnation. Yeah. And, and this is the problem is we postulate false teachings because we do not understand the principles of free will, love and responsibility. Yeah. 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 Very, very simple. Very simple. Very simple. And I think it's great that people are starting to say, look, the world's a complete mess because that's part of us. Mm, but uh, what I see angry people doing is they're saying, look, the world's a complete mess and it's, it's God's fault. fault. It's somebody yeah. else's fault. That's even, what I was about even to say. Even Catherine, yep. she never mentions her own complicitness in the creation of the world's problems, ever. Yep. She believes herself to be perfect. She believes herself to be without sin She's on the matter. She's the one helping raise consciousness. That's what she believes, yeah. yes. When she herself has demonstrated, even in her statements, mm. exact opposite teachings to God's truth and God's love. Mm. And, and this is where I see people making huge mistakes. They believe themselves to be loving. And it's yeah. as we talked about in Sin and Redemption, the very, the most difficult things that you're going to have to repent for are the things where you did not believe you did anything wrong in the first place. Yeah. And the world is full of this. Full of it. Full yeah. of it. And, so. and yes, and that was the point I was going to make. Great. Let's see that it is a mess because it is, but it's not any, it, we can't keep blaming God. Or somebody else. Yes. It's, it's like that old saying, you know, everyone thinks about changing the world, but they never think about changing themselves. But it's all about changing the externals instead of looking at Yeah, which what's... is part of our addictions, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not to blame. Yeah. That's an addiction to, yeah. to believe that you're not to blame when you live, you know, in, on the earth and therefore are participating in the earth and the way it's currently operating. Yeah. And then to say or assume that you're not to, you're not responsible for the mm -hmm. outcome. It's ludicrous to believe such a thing. And, and really, the more sensitive you become emotionally, the more you realise, wow. Correct. This emotion within me contributes to this huge issue or this, this is, is where, where my will is exerting the... in towards something that's really unloving because that's I don't right. want to feel this. And, and yeah. this is where I see the lack of humility in, in, in emails like this, yeah. the terrible lack of humility. Yeah. There's this underlying belief that, no, you know, the world's a mess and God should come and fix it or God should rescue us or God or wouldn't have God's, sent us here in the first place. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, how can you say these things? It can't be true. I, I can't accept these belief systems. And, and all of these other reasoning and ph philosophical arguments are all presented just because a person personally doesn't want to be humble and see actually they personally are contributing to the terrible way that the earth and all of these spheres, you know, all of the hells as yeah. well are operating. Yeah, yeah. Okay. including all the codependent addictions, one of which you've just stated, which is the codependent addiction between parents and children, children, that the parent tells the child what to do and the parent pushes the child into an action that the parent believes is better. right because yeah. they know better, Yeah, which is yeah. one of the problems. Yes, <laughs> and it holds, it holds the world back from changing of so course it much, does. generation it, it's after generation. It's a multi-generational injury that, 
that means that people stay in the same religions for thousands of years. You have families that have been in the same religion for thousand years, even though the religion has obviously taught falsehood mm -hmm. and all of them even accept that that has mm -hmm. at some point, they mm -hmm. still stay in the religion. Mm -hmm. Why they do that? Because of this emotional pressure from parent to child, parent yeah. to child, parent to child. Yeah. The exact same emotional pressure that Catherine herself would put on children mm -hmm. herself mm -hmm. and probably has done if she's had child, children of herself, yeah. probably has done, I would yeah. suggest. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let's keep going. A lot of now what she says we've, we have addressed, so, but jump in, obviously. Mm. It seems obvious that if human beings were imperfect, then it would not be their fault. Well, would, why do you say human like that? That she's written it capital H U. I don't know why. Um, and then capital B E. I, I don't. Anyway, I won't do it. But just yeah, I, I think it's very off-putting. But also, <laughs> obviously, she has some emotional reason there's for some, doing I, so. That's why which, I added it because there's obviously some meaning for her because she does it consistently. But I don't really understand. Well, it. I, I think again, she's highlighting the man side of it rather than or the know. Hugh. Doesn't Hugh is a name for God or something in some ancient language? I've I think. got no idea. But it the, is, the reality is yeah. that it's complete. Again, it's something that's. Again, an expression, an a, it's an emotional addiction that she's yeah. expressing. Yeah. We are human beings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's not human beings. Yeah, you know. she's not, yeah anyway, <laughs> emphasise the, the God and the bee, I guess, but let's go. Yes. It seems obvious that if human beings were imperfect, We then are a creation of God. It would not be, if human beings were imperfect then it would not be the fault of the humans, the created, rather the fault would lie in the creator. I cannot agree. I cannot agree. If human beings were created imperfect, then it would be the mm -hmm. fault of the creator. But human beings can be imperfect without being created imperfect. Yes. And this is a basic uh, assumption that's out, out of, again, out of harmony with any logic. You can call, cause your own imperfection mm -hmm. by sinning. Mm -hmm. And I know new age people hate hearing the word <laughs> sin, yeah. but it is a reality. Yeah. The reality is you can cause your own self-destruction by sinning. You can cause your own imperfection by sinning. Mm -hmm. and, the, and when I say by sinning, every time you miss the mark of love, you are sinning. Mm -hmm. Every time you miss the mark of love, you now have caused your own self-destruction and the destruction of those around you. Mm -hmm. Every time you do it, you've created more imperfection. Yeah. And, and, and this is what we need to understand. Human beings have even created their own imperfection. Yes. They weren't created imperfect. Mm -hmm. They personally created imperfection. Yeah. And we need to understand this primary point. There are many creations in God's universe that God has not created mm -hmm. because God gave humans the power to create. Yes. And one of the things God gave human the power to create is their own imperfection, yep. their own ability to sin, mm -hmm. their own ability to engage it. So, so what we need to understand there is that, that the imperfection is not the result of God's imperfection. Mm -hmm. It is a result of humankind choosing to act out of harmony with love, which causes their own imperfection. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And I find it really illogical. I have run across this a lot of times in New Age teachings where there's this sort of throwaway statement, we're all perfect. At no, coming, we're obviously not. We're obviously not because <laughs> look at everything around us. Correct. And so, and even look at our own lives and illnesses and, and our tortured kind of relationships it doesn't make any sense no. before we came to the planet yes, yes i can agree we were perfect then and we were in an unconscious state of our own perfect yeah. our own perfection yeah. but as soon as we arrive on this planet there's all this barrage of very unloving emotions that we begin to absorb mm -hmm. and as a result imperfection is created mm -hmm. now how can we create perfection quite simply remove the sin yes remove the actions out of harmony with love and the imperfection will disappear completely. It won't be created it anymore. It won't be created anymore mm -hmm. and it will be healed. Mm -hmm. That's how you heal the planet, by removing the sin yes. from the planet. Yes. 
Yeah. And, and God's not going to do that when we created it. Mm-hmm. We, as self-responsible beings, need to do it ourselves. Mm-hmm. We need to remove the sin. Mm-hmm. Now, God's willing to help us once we acknowledge our sin. Yeah. Th- then God's perfectly willing to engage in a much easier process, as we've mm-hmm. talked about before, the process of repentance and forgiveness mm-hmm. will help a much easier process. But, but someone like uh, Catherine has yet to enter repentance, repentance. or forgiveness. Yeah. And yeah. So, so, of course... They're still sinning. Mm-hmm. They're still creating imperfection on the planet. And what I like what you about what you just the point you just made was that Catherine has referred to us as the created and God as the creator, when in fact you have just really defined that God did create us, but He created or she created us to be little mini creators ourselves. And this is where... And it, not mini creators. Like massive we can, creators. We can create, well, you can Just affect not the, on the scale of God Not yet. on the scale of God, but, but you yes. can affect a, a whole earth negatively. Yes. That's or how massively... Positively. One person can affect exactly. the whole earth negatively just by pressing a button that says, you know, yeah, nukes, launch 10,000 yeah. nuclear weapons. <laughs> yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty full on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So she says again that this is only logical. By the way, I notice that you often blame earthly parents for imposing error upon their children. What a mess, right? What a mess, right? Um, Yeah, it is a mess. It is a mess. And 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 stupidity, uh, the definition of stupidity, thinking that your children are going to finish up being better than you when you have imposed a whole heap of negative emotions on your children before they've, you know, just after they've arrived mm-hmm. is stupidity. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a mess, but it's a mess of mankind's creation, humankind's yeah. creation, women yeah. as well as men. Yeah. <laughs> and the resp- and while she uses the word blame, it's, it's more like we speak about the responsibility for Well, it each. is blame too. It, it is we the fault We can apportion of the people. fault yes. of the result towards yeah. the persons who did it, can yeah. we not? We can. And the persons who did it, you know, the child itself came, un, you know, without an awareness. So who is the, who 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 is the person who's to blame for causing the child to get into a state of sin itself? The parent, the parent. itself. Yeah. There's no other person yep. that can be to blame. Yeah. Yes. But now, as adults, we must each take personal responsibility for, you, for what, the fact that the sin exists that exists within <laughs> us but this is also why god is willing to engage the re- principles of repentance and forgiveness because mm-hmm. god knows that a lot of the sin that's within us did not get there through our personal desire to sin no but got there because of our parents desire to sin yeah. and parent their parents desire to sin and their and parents so desire to sin yeah. and so on god is not going to take away the sin though no. unless we engage the process of Becoming having an awareness or an awakening to the sin. Because we have to engage our will to desire something other than sin for for God to be able to assist us. Is again it's just a lesson in will. Of course. Yeah. And and yet and yet God can assist us most powerfully if we do so yes. such a thing. And within one generation of people yeah. we could completely change this earth if we all engage God in that process. Yeah. But of course we all think arrogantly. Mm-hmm. And without humility, mm-hmm. and so it's highly unlikely we'll engage God in the process yeah. in, in one in one, in one generation, generation yeah. unless there's some major events that occur that cause us to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she says, I can only conclude that we humans are either A, made perfect, or B, God is imperfect. I choose A, made perfect. Yeah, but she's skipping over the uh, other logical exactly. arguments, isn't she? Here? Yes. She's basically saying that, God made humans perfect, but now we're imperfect. There's got to be a reason why, but 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 the reason that I'm giving her is not satisfactory to her. Yeah. And I, the reason I'm giving you, Catherine, is we have become imperfect because of our choice to sin. Yeah. That's why we became imperfect. And yeah. this, and you personally are continuing to choose to sin. So of course you're not going to become perfect by mm-hmm. doing so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, given that we certainly cannot deserve planet Earth as our first stop straight out of the gate, my children do not have to earn a place in my home. 
at least not as children. I cannot agree. Her original but, argument about children demonstrate they do have to have her opinions about things for a start. Second, so straight away, she's, she's not even seeing her own emotional, unhealed emotional condition. Mm -hmm. But secondly, there's no logic in what she's saying. I don't follow that yeah, argument. There's no either. argument there. What's the earn the place? Where are we earning? We're not she earning feels anything. we're earning something here? Or? No, we're not earning anything. No. no. Like, and, and, you know, God doesn't send us here in punishment or, nor send us here in reward. Mm. The reality is the incarnation process is a scientific process. Just like every other law, like the law of gravity, it's going to continue to operate no matter what the human choice is. We, as humans, have okay. chosen to damage the environment where the newcomers are coming. Mm -hmm. That's our fault, yeah. not God's. Yeah. God didn't choose to make the earth this way the earth became this way because of our choice yeah so we can't then go blaming god for something we did yes is she trying to say that by coming somewhere dreadful that children have to earn a place in a, in a, a better spirit place. in a better place with god isn't by that basically living here the first? teaching of reincarnation though uh, yeah I, isn't well, that basically what so. the teaching of reincarnation states yeah. which she's actually now in disagreement with. Yeah. So, so again, like this is what I notice is that many of the people who ask these kind of questions are totally illogical in almost all of their reasoning mm. because it's like on one hand they're saying that it's wrong to do something that reincarnation actually teaches, mm -hmm. which is what she's saying here. Mm -hmm. Reincarnation actually teaches that so the reason why point. you're here is because you did the wrong thing the last time you yeah. were here and you've had to come back to learn the lessons. Yeah. Like isn't that a punishment? <laughs> and and I think people, there's no compassion, there's very little compassion on earth. However, God has an immense compassion, as you just previously explained about yes. repentance, forgiveness, understanding where sin comes from. And it, just because it's not displayed by other humans doesn't mean that God doesn't have it. And it does certainly doesn't mean that we're in some kind of uh, earning situation of God's love. This is why I find reincarnation teaching so, like, they're so like totally like I'm just, I, I can't I, I say enough that they are so badly done <laughs> <laughs> even as a philosophy yeah. right and because even just basic things are just so unreasonable mm -hmm. and illogical mm -hmm. and yet people still persist in believing it and the, and the, and I'm saying the reason why is not to do with any logical or, or uh, like logical philosophical argument, mm. but it's because of their emotional condition. That they yeah, it. the open, the the need to rationalise some very painful emotions away yes. causes people to be receptive to what are actually quite unloving teachings. Yes, and if if these same people chose to feel their, their hurt, hurt emotions yeah. and release their hurt emotions they would look back upon their reasoning and go, wow, why did I even think that? Yeah. Let alone, is it true? Yeah. They would never even wonder whether it was true yeah. Yeah. because it, their own thinking would instantly dismiss it through a, a, a now loving-based logical argument. Yes. Right? Yeah. It is completely the reincarnation teachings, and we've got to go through them. We're not we going to go through them in this discussion. No. But the reincarnation teachings are so illogical as to be like... Like the reality is, I, I don't understand how anybody could even come up with them to a degree. Mm -hmm. But but that applies to most religious thought, actually. Mm -hmm. Like there are many religions on this planet that teach that their religion is best and everyone else is going to be killed. Well, that's mm -hmm. a totally illogical thought, I would yep. have thought, yep. if you thought about love, yep. you know. And then there's the religious teachings about, you know, there's no spirit world. Well, that's pretty illogical considering that lots of people near death experience have been there and yep, yep. lots of people have talked to spirits and so forth. Yep. And you have to basically ignore that mountain of evidence yes. to, to believe it. Yep. So, so to me, there's so many... Uh, instances where philosophical arguments are presented without any foundation on truth uh, with truth whatsoever truth and love really isn't it because well it's even just basic truth basic, like yeah. the basic truth that the fact is we have this earth in this condition mm -hmm. the fact if is if god exists he obviously intended for the earth to mm -hmm. be in this condition mm -hmm. under certain circumstances mm -hmm. what we've got to do is find what circumstances cause the earth to be yeah. into this position yeah. and then we'll be able to undo that potentially yes and yeah. we already know from, you know, from 
teeny tiny, like you gave the example of the st hot stove or the fire, we know that painful stimuli is there for our protection, essentially, so to lead us. So physically we know it. So physically we know it. We don't seem to consider that emotionally pain, oh, maybe it's telling maybe me I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, okay. maybe I'm doing something wrong. It's just a I different... I could change. Maybe I can change would... and not have that pain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that's where human beings are not logical. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. not logical at all because we, we do not, as soon as we choose to not feel and release our hurt emotional experience, mm -hmm. we are now completely illogical. Our, our brain is not even capable of logical mm -hmm. thought under mm -hmm. those circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the problem that we face. Mm -hmm. To become capable of logical thought, we have to receive love from an external source. Mm -hmm. And God is the only real and, and infinite external source of love. Mm -hmm. And if we receive love from that external source, then we have the potential to have logical understanding of yeah. everything in the universe yeah. until then we are just working through all of our dark colored glasses yes. all of our dark emotions all of our unhealed emotional expression is being expressed out of ourselves in our in our belief systems yes like That's all that's it, happening. um through a through a glass darkly which is exactly yeah. a bible quote it's a quotation <laughs> yeah and and I find that very powerful, that passage in Corinthians, because it is saying, like, at the moment, I don't really see love clearly yes. because I'm in my staff here yes. and I'm going to have to grow towards God in order to really see clearly. But again, the problem I see with emails like this is they do believe they see love clearly. Yeah. They do believe that their opinion is even greater than God's. Mm -hmm. And, and it is a height of arrogance to believe such while the earth is in such pain and suffering. Yeah. If we're in such pain and suffering, it's logical to accept that such pain and suffering must have a cause. Mm -hmm. And if it does have a cause, perhaps if, if God is a perfect God, then the cause cannot be God. The cause has to be something else. Mm. And that's a logical statement. But, but to make these other reincarnation beliefs is very illogical to believe that you know, we're going to get keep on getting recycled here and recycled here, not even having a conscious awareness of what we did wrong the last time we yeah, were here, yeah. which which is the height of torture, is yeah. it not? Um, it's you like know, punishment. It's like being without punished without understanding what you're being punished for. Correct. Yeah. And not and not knowing what you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Like here is uh, what I'm saying is quite clear. What you have to learn is the loving use of your of will. will. That's. Yeah. That's quite clear. Yes. It's quite, you know, there's a lot of clarity in that. Yeah. But when you come here, come here again, come here again, come here 600 times, still not understanding the previous time you came here and why you were here for and what you were getting punished for, that's not clarity. Like, that's what I mean is such a, it's a crazy argumentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, but, but people who have not healed their emotional condition do make crazy arguments. Yeah. They make arguments for hatred, for war, mm -hmm. for death, mm -hmm. for destruction, as we can see on this planet. That's yeah. what we do when we're out of harmony with love. We make arguments and take actions that are completely out of harmony yeah, with love as well. Yeah. So, you know, we need to see that. Yeah. Can we just have a break? Yes, I need to let's do it. Break.